way. There we go. Awesome. So I figure I'll just get started right away. I know people will be sprinkling in. So we will, um, we all just probably be popping in and out to, to let people in. Um, but I wanted to get started because I'm not going to keep us super long tonight. Often I end up going over a little bit. And uh, tonight I am at uh, some, some sports tryouts for one of my daughters. So I, uh, I'm going to just jump right in and, and um, we're going to have a really beautiful meditation tonight to celebrate the full moon that is coming up on Saturday. And it's a really big, um, a really big one. The harvest moons are really cool because I'm just going to, um, Margie, do you mind throwing yourself on mute just in case, just because there's a little bit of background noise. So just for the recording, feel free. Thanks, love. <clears throat> feel free to hop on and, and ask any questions you guys might have throughout the, the evening, of course. Um, but uh, yeah, this this harvest moon is really cool because it's I find the most powerful one that we have in generally May and October uh, September. It's this last full moon before the harvest, and the ground is kind of pushing everything up out of the. Uh... Oh yeah, for sure. Um... Let me just see if I can do that for you, Kathy. I'm just gonna try and send out a Zoom link here. And da -da. there we go. There we are. Sorry about that, guys. Thank you so much. There, I sent it over, Kathy. So hopefully that worked. Uh, awesome. Um, and Samara is joining us, just connecting to audio. So thank you so much. Hello, beautiful. Great mm -hmm. to see you. I'm just getting started. Perfect timing. Perfect timing. So I was just starting to talk about this. Um, this full moon that we have coming up, it is a big one. And when we look at a full moon, um, it's really cool because this one is in Pisces. And of course that's a water sign. And when we have full moons, the water is literally increasing um, levels in the earth. And so the flow of things is very apparent and pertinent right now. And this, um, this planetary retrograde business that we have going on here too there's like seven planets in alignment as of today mercury came into retrograde too so um things like communications and electronics can go a little bit wonky and things can start to get a little bit chaotic in the the field of um trying to work online for people it's oh. I'm just turning down things by accident here. Sorry, guys. Um, things can sort of happen that seem out of our control sometimes. So it's it's a really great time for intention. And when we think of intention, we think of being in that tension of sort of being where we we know where we're going, where we have a good idea of our GPS point of our alignment of where we're sort of headed and this is how we truly keep our compass pointed because at times like this especially with the full moon and such all of these things can be popping up in our fields and right now it seems as though I don't know if you guys have noticed this but a lot of the the gurus and and healers and masters are saying that this time is very emotional and I've noticed it with myself even um, just watching a video I just I started tearing up all of a sudden and it was just like the emotions are very strong right now the the 
uh, people are, are feeling feeling the emotions they're feeling the things that they're going through and it's interesting too because this point in time is cyclically a point in time they've gone they've done so much research on you know the planets and where they are and what things kind of tend to happen and patterns that tend to happen and and it's really neat because we're in this ascension cycle of of um politicians and leaders and it's kind of it's switched into just over the last couple of days um being really focused on the powers that be and when we think of that it's really interesting how they've announced that the queen has passed away and the the matriarchal politicalness of everything you're so welcome kathy welcome back the politicalness of everything that's going on um, it's the cycle for this to be happening right now. So it's quite unique and quite interesting. I found that all of a sudden this is all happening. I don't know if you guys heard this, but months ago I got, um, messages, uh, from, I'm a, I'm a part of a few different sort of conspiracy theorist groups. And back in March, they were saying that the queen had died. There was a, a Chinese, a wholesaler that had gotten an order for flags that had the queen's face on it and it had 1926 to 2022 and it had they they had ordered all these flags and people were like what's going on and so i was like well if if, if she has that way, they're probably not going to announce it till the next um ascension cycle starts and it was like i don't know if it's just coincidental but it's it's amazing how it's all sort of coming full circle and um hey lisa welcome guys welcome if you uh if you're okay i'm recording so if you're okay with putting your microphones on mute for now just so we don't have too much background noise of course uh, feel free to unmute if you have any questions or anything but that way if anybody comes bursting into the room and starts talking to you you don't have to worry about pushing mute i'm on a on a mobile device today so i can't i don't actually have the ability to mute unless i go off my other screen so thank you for that um, so yeah, some really kind of cool, crazy things happening in the ascension cycle, in the lunar cycle, in what's going on right now with all these planets in retrograde. The planets in retrograde doesn't necessarily have anything to do with this, this next item that I'm going to mention. But one of the things that a lot of the masters have been sort of saying, hey, Jesse, nice to see your beautiful face. Thank you for joining us. Um, one of the really sort of interesting tidbits and something that you can take to heart over the next couple of weeks is basically from September 10th till about the 25th, a lot of the masters out there are, are sort of warning against getting way out there. Like if you, I don't know if you guys have noticed, but there has been shifts. Like even if people aren't doing this kind of work, they're like, they're breaking up in relationships, they're moving house, they're like, there's big shifts going on. And it's very all of a sudden, and it's very quick. And it's very um, big stuff. No worries. That's awesome. I'm just glad you can make it. That's great. Um, so one of the things that they're saying is a lot of times right now, lunar cycle wise, this is almost where people um, kind of lose their poop a little bit, the, the school shootings, the mass, like, the kind of crazy terroristic type things the the things that are just that seem so unimaginable this week is sort of that flare of time so a lot of people that are sort of in the know are kind of on edge about you know what sort of may happen on in in the world on a on a on a conscious level on a on a collective level um, a lot of people that don't have this ascension shift happening are feeling this shift feeling this energy and it's kind of making them for some it will push them over the edge and so there's a, a bit of a warning out just you know if you are a person that's online and say you're ready to launch your new business and you just decided yes this is what I'm going to do I am going to I'm totally walking away from that other business I'm going for it with this one I am just doing this I'm getting a new job I am it's more for online people. Now this is because you're putting your energy out there to absolutely anyone and you're really kind of 
throwing it out there, if you throw it out there in a very boastful way where you're like, I just signed 15 clients, I made $50,000 this year, it's going to trigger some people and those people will attack. And so when people are just starting out a business and you're in something like coaching, um, the best time for launching is not in the next couple of weeks. <laughs> so take this as a bit of a birthing period. Know that what you are doing and what you are sort of collectively, you know, sort of starting, allow it to really kind of birth through you over these next two weeks. Really allow the lessons, the, the things that one of the things we're going to talk about today is and do in the meditation is this is kind of the time to be able to break up with parts of ourselves to sort of to maybe um, I don't know if you guys have read Joe Dispenza's Breaking the Habit of Being Yourself, but that is a perfect book to dive into this week because that is exactly the shift that we're able to make the most quick and efficient and and ease and flow way it's really made to sort of allow this to happen right now. So what we're going to do in meditation is we're going to look at a couple of things that um, we met maybe ready to break up with about ourselves. You know, I want us to think about those patterns. A lot of times I've been when just as I've been coaching this week, it's like, it's interesting that you say that because they're like, gosh, how many times do I have to do this? Hey, or like, I'm doing this for the third or fourth time. Hey, like, do you think this is a pattern? And it's like, well, that's actually why this is coming up this week, because we get to look at that and go, so I've done this all my life. And do I want to still do this? Maybe we do. Right. And we can make that choice to continue to do it. But those things that are these kind of patterns, these subconscious patterns that we've been asking these questions, like what's in my way, what's stopping me? they're coming in, the answers are coming. And so it's very important that we pay attention to those answers that we're getting from the universe right now. So um, we're going to very shortly dive into some meditation. I don't want anyone to go into these next couple of weeks feeling fearful about Mercury retrograde or about you know, not getting out there. The key about not projecting yourself out there too much is that if you've been kind of under the under the like sort of under the radar a little bit stay under the radar for just another couple of weeks to protect yourself energetically to protect yourself um just from all of the the stuff that you know if we're if we're projecting things that are maybe not in perfect alignment or you know I was in such a rush to get this energy workers course out. And I keep getting this, this message in my head to just hold back a couple of weeks because um, I have a lot of massage therapists that want to end up sort of getting into healing in different ways. And I have all these sort of fine tuning things that are just coming into focus. And it's like, it's just not yet. And now I know why I was like, Oh, yeah, it's this, it's this lunar time. It's the way Uranus is, it's the way everything is in the degrees that they are the sun and the moon being totally opposite. Not that I guide my life by it. But if I can have two weeks of, you know, sort of manifestation meditation time to make sure that this baby that I've been birthing comes out exactly like it should and not rushing it it's going to be a whole lot easier I mean we can have the baby early right but it's a whole it adds a whole lot of other complications so we can kind of skip the complications part skip that stuff that would often we would sort of allow to sort of get in our way as far as resistance and hold the intention of where we really want to go and being having intention with everything we do so being very intentional with everything with every message with every conversation with every segment of our day you know even very intentional getting up in the morning very intentional on our vibration and what what we are feeling what we are are emitting and noticing if we're not feeling good or if it's feeling kind of yucky that something is maybe out of alignment and really taking this time to, to have a look at that. So this full moon is a great time to purge. It's a great time to, it, you'll have the energy to, you'll want to, you'll feel like just cleaning your space, cleaning your area. And so I'm going to give you guys a little full moon ritual that you can do tonight. Um, or tomorrow, because the technically, I guess, for Jesse, it would probably be 
uh, this evening already. And um, for the rest of us, it's actually on tomorrow night around five, six in the morning, Eastern time is when the full moon is at full capacity. But this full moon ritual is really cool because all it involves is getting some sage or some Palo Santo, some incense, um, even some sweet grass, something that you can burn. And you do a little smudge on yourself. You do a little sort of cleansing on yourself. You light the, um, you light the, sorry, I'm getting a phone call in the middle there. You light the incense and you just go around your body, just asking for cleansing, asking for purifying, asking, you know, for the light to just be able to come in, just to cleanse every cell of your body, just waft the smoke over yourself, allow your whole body to just be smudged, bring it from right from top to bottom. And then you're going to move around your space, move around your room, move around your house, move around your apartment to every corner. So you literally go across and along every wall around. You keep going um, in every nook and cranny of your whole house. Um, you end up just getting oh, So it's really neat if you are with cleansing and all that kind of stuff. If you are. I find my um, sage sticks and things like that at some health food stores even sell them um, or at like crystal and rock shops. They're a really cool place to have um, things like that. Or sometimes there are um, things like uh, if you could find a place that would sell something along the lines of tarot cards or some of those funky shops that are in little kiosks and stuff like that they often have some incense even um incense you can even find at certain um like downtown stores if it's um you can get palo santo incense so it doesn't actually have to be full palo santo hi Sandra, welcome we're just talking about this crazy beautiful full moon that we have coming up here and all the things that it is uh encompassing for us and all the things that it's giving us the ability to be able to shift right now and these planets in retrograde that are just this beautiful way for the planets actually kind of slow down a little bit. It's the way the sun is actually shining on them makes them almost seem as though they're going backwards. And this gives us that review, that release, that relooking, that reorganizing time where we can kind of have a, a really good view of what's going on from that higher sort of point of view. So um, with, uh, with incense, with cleansing your, your house without incense, you could also, the really cool thing about cleansing and smudging is you can do it with almost anything. If you set the intention for your body to be cleansed, you can actually put water in a spritzer bottle and you can just spritz yourself with that water. I put water with a little bit of Epsom salts in it and I just hold the water in my, my hands and I just, I, I literally bless it. I just ask for the water to just cleanse and purify my whole energy center. And what we're doing is we're cleansing our auric field. So about three feet around us, our energy sort of flows out to. Sometimes people, it's even bigger. Horses, it's like five times. It's huge. I love it. But with them, yeah, you can use like, say, dried herbs if you happen to have. I didn't want to get too into things, but you can actually go out to the ditch and sometimes find sage and find sweet grass and things like that. But it's if you're not sure, sometimes it can end up really harming you if you breathe the fumes and stuff like that in. So I feel like even just doing a little water spritzer for you might be really helpful. And the salt is a way to just kind of get some... Um, some electrons floating around in the air to it's, it's actually going to affect your energy center just by asking you but just by asking it to cleanse you so truly it can just be simply water in a spritzer bottle it doesn't have to be anything fancy um you can sometimes people do it even with wood at a fire you know they'll sort of um, almost imagine that that smoke coming to cleanse them so but you can absolutely okay. just do it with a, a spritzer bottle okay. So yeah, it's beautiful. Do you have a lot of light sources in the room very much? No. Can no. I stick it in the corner somewhere? Yeah. Um, I don't have a problem with that. Kathy, do you mind yes. just throwing yourself on mute there for a moment? Um, just while you're chatting, I don't want to. Uh, 
there we go perfect thank you thank you so yeah um cleansing ourselves cleansing our the area of our house you would literally just go around and spritz you can do it with essential oils you can literally use the oils in a diffuser you can put them in your room you can put them in your hands just kind of walking around the house and letting the fragrances and the vibration from the oils um, work like that too, if you happen to have that kind of stuff around home. So yeah, just literally cleansing your system, cleansing your room, cleansing your house. And then we do a list. So a fun thing to do is just literally sit under the moonlight, sit whether you're just, you can see the moon outside your window or you can sit outside and just enjoy the moonlight. And you take two pieces of paper. The first piece of paper, you're gonna divide into three sections. And you're going to basically make those three sections, the good, the bad, and the ugly. So what we do instead of a lunar year, um, like January, I use this as my year end type of reflection, because we're now going to be going into this whole sort of next season, right? And that's what the full moon before the seasonal change before the, the winter equinox hops in here, or the winter solstice, sorry, we, we end up getting this amazing review time and with the planets in retrograde like they are it's just perfect timing for this so it's great to just write down a few good things that have happened this year really those you know when you're in a good meditative state just kind of sit and and park a few good things that have happened you know maybe it was just a day you had with your daughter and you did this and that or you know it was just a really good day um today is one of those good days for me. Like there's been such big shifts in the last few weeks for me, the things that have been working out, um, electronically something failed on me registering my daughter for, um, this team that she's been wanting to try out for. And one of the, the other moms was beautiful enough to say, and she's, my daughter's a goalie and the, the other mom, her daughter's a goalie as well. And she said, I don't see you on our list. Like, did you get registered? Okay. And I was like, yeah, I mean, I'm here. I got, we got all the tryout dates, but something had happened where they didn't register her. And, um, we couldn't figure out how it had happened because I was able to register for one thing and not the other, but in any case, most of the time and any other year, if she wasn't on that list, she wasn't going to get to try out because there is such a, it's such a huge competition. And today I literally just before I came out here, I was talking with her and I said, thank you so much for letting me know that we weren't on the list because I, she's like, I don't know how you managed to get on Jackie. Like that was, that was a freaking miracle. Like I was 99% sure when I saw you last week that you were not coming back because there's no way that doesn't happen. Like they don't just get, they don't let you in. Even the guy you talked to, he would have had to go to a whole board and get it approved for your daughter to be let in late and all this. I was like, I don't know how it happened. And it, it's just like, it's like, it's just magical. And I was just so grateful. And I'm like, oh, I just love how everything just works out sometimes. And it just felt so good to just be, in such gratitude of really feeling that and noticing these things that are shifting, these things that are changing, the way things have just been going. It's like this momentum is finally happening. It, it was such a struggle for so long. And what I realized is most of the time it was myself that was making the struggle. It was myself that was causing it to be a struggle. It was myself that was making my sort of getting in our own way. And now even when my computer skills fail and you know I'm getting in my daughter's way of succeeding and getting what she wants the universe has had this beautiful way of sort of helping us out here and truly trusting that and truly sort of knowing eventually that it does really finally start to happen in that whole Fibonacci sequence and all this momentum that we keep hearing about it really does happen so I want to keep us in tension with where we're going. So I want you guys to think about that list, think about some good things of, you know, where you're going, how it lined up for you this year. And then the bad is going to be, you know, some just kind of not so great things, you know, maybe the, maybe the car broke down, maybe, you know, maybe it was just I, you know, I, I've been really tired, maybe, 
because man, have you guys been exhausted lately or what? Like it has been, there's been some, some big energy shifts where we're being literally guided to kind of do years of repair in this last couple of weeks where it's, you feel your body just wanting to shut down. Like, I think I've had to have more naps lately than I ever have. And I mean, you, you go there just like I, even just to lie down for 10 minutes, just to let that brain kind of recharge. There's so much energy going on. So be graceful with yourselves, be gentle with yourselves. That's this time is really about our self-care, our noticing those things that we always put last that really need to go first and kind of making sure that those are getting some time on our real estate uh, grid that we're spending time on. So the ugly is the really ugly. So that huge blowout with this person that, you know, you're still not talking to, or that, you know, big sort of like, it's been the crappiest financial time in my whole life. Like throw the ugly on this list, because this is where we get to really look and we get to really shift and we get to break up with these parts of us because we see now that this was present moments. These were moments that, you know, when we weren't maybe in total vibration in, in that alignment of where we were. And it's kind of like the ends of those, those sort of vibes, those things that we were doing that wind up sort of bringing us back to where we were in the first place. So have a look at that ugly. And then on your other piece of paper, now that the good, bad, bad, and the ugly if you have a chance to have a fire, absolutely do that. You can burn it. You can bury it. You can actually just keep it on an altar for a few days, which is just basically putting it on a, on a dresser, on a desk, on a, on a stool in a corner of your house. If you have any crystals, you can put them on top of the list and just kind of let the earth sort of vibrate with that, bringing all that up into focus. But what you're going to have fun with is the list now on a new piece of paper and what you're wanting to change, what you're feeling you really want to change. When you look at your good, bad, and ugly list, you're like, okay, not going through that again, not going to have that happen. So it's a beautiful time to just kind of be able to really examine the good, bad, and the ugly, and then decide what you're going to change. And so on a full moon, when I take my change paper, that's the one that I kind of I carry it around with me. I put it under my pillow for the first few nights. My husband thinks I'm whacked. But <laughs> rock crystals fall out of my bra and my pillowcase all the time. So <laughs> a list is nothing to go in there for a couple of days. But it's literally so your chosen thoughts, intentions can stay with you when you sleep. They can stay with you all the time. You can keep them in your pocketbook. You can keep them in your purse, in your wallet, so that you can kind of go back and be reminded, usually just for a few days, even a week, kind of keeping the list. And then you can keep it in your, I have like, I have a little altar that I sort of keep all my, my monthly intentions and things like that together with my rocks and my, I have some frankincense and things like that in little resin frankincense and stuff that I just like having sprinkled around. And um, I enjoy that kind of thing, but not everybody does. You can even just use a candle and just burn it in, in an ashtray in the house. It doesn't have to be anything fancy or you don't have to have a big fire or anything like that, but it's really nice to be able to, um, to just sort of let some of that go. So I burn the good, bad and the ugly list after a few days of keeping it so that I can reflect on it. And I keep my chosen list for often. I, I actually never really destroy them. I always kind of keep them with me so that I can always be reminded of my choices that I make. So I like doing this on a full moon, but especially in May and September, this is when I get my good, bad and ugly list. So, cause it's like a literally a yearly review. So use this as, as a bit of a new year's uses as a bit of a a shifting time to to allow this whole like this is a whole new ascension cycle this is big stuff so we have this energetic support um i don't just talk about it because it's what's going on it's literally what's going to support us and make this easier so that we can do years worth of work within weeks and why not right we're we're truly here anyways we're doing it so if we kind of it's like knowing it's going to rain and having your rain boots and umbrella that you can put on so you don't get wet you know it's like even the the not getting out there super huge like today is this two next two weeks is not the day to start a new two week I'm going online every day because number one it's going to feel like a struggle you're going to really not want to there's going to be energy that's keeping you from it so it's like I'm just not going to fight it for the next two weeks I'm going to get my content ready 
I'm going to be ready to, you know, burst through at the end of the month. It's going to be huge, but this next couple of weeks, it's, it can be a bit of a, a bit of a, a rough time just historically. So knowing that um, just gives us so much more support, right? We can spend our energy and our time on other things other than being all over social media. It's just one of those things that um, may be really helpful. So perfect timing. I've got my Heather squares in and now we're ready to hop into meditation. Welcome, Heather. Awesome to see you. I just finished yabbering on about the full moon and all the beautiful stuff that it's doing right now. So I am, um, I would love to just take you guys right into a quick meditation and just be able to explore some of the things. Now, the beautiful thing is with a meditation like this, you don't have to do anything. You can literally just choose to play in the field with us. And um, Jesse, I know you're driving, so you may not be able to, are you the driver or are you the passenger? Passenger? Okay, good. So you can, you can, um, the really nice thing about this time is your number two perfect it's it's like you can yay thank you driver <laughs> so you can you can literally take this time to kind of allow the the energy that you really want to be coming in for the next three months this is huge manifestation time these last few months are like the birth of everything that we've been working for it's just all ready to sort of flourish and come to it's like there's these you know these few little things that that we may be ready to break up with in ourselves to to really kind of let go and shift just because it's not healthy you know so we're gonna look through some of those things and this may be just the self-talk this may be just the beating up of thyself this may just be putting up boundaries you know to make things more like we make things way more complicated than they have to be sometimes it always comes back to keeping it simple looking at what we wanted a year ago looking you know at, at sort of what we wanted to be doing even when we were a kid I had this beautiful I don't know if you guys remember this but to describe how energy works and when we're a kid and how we're so free, because we're all over the world, maybe this didn't resonate with you guys. But when I was a kid, one of the things that we did was we did this exercise that was called light of a light as a feather. And as children, we'd all it was weird. And I'm thinking, like, was this in another timeline? Was this when I was like a witch in medieval terms or something? But no, I remember I can't see the faces, but I remember doing this with friends. Lisa's like, yeah. So one would lie in the middle and they would have to think light as a feather, light as a feather and light as a feather. And that's all they would have to focus on. That was the strict instructions. Don't think about anything except for being light as a feather. And you guys probably experienced this too. There were certain kids, they were as light as a feather, even if they were bigger kids, if they were, they had the capacity to change their energy to the point where everyone would just sit with two fingers underneath. And we'd have like, I don't know, six or eight people around a person. And all of, we would try and all lift the person at the same time. And they would freaking levitate. Like when I was like, I just, I was mind blown. I had forgotten about this completely until I think it was yesterday or the day before. And I remembered this light as a feather, light as a feather, because I was actually using one of the, the frequencies to try and get my tire to refill uh, when it was going flat. And I was like, I know that one of these can actually create space. And I was like, oh, light as a feather. I remember that. And kids, they're so brilliant. They're so not closed off that they can allow their consciousness to embrace that. And they could actually shift their energy and everyone else around them got in that same energy. And you were able to do amazing things. There's a few other ones. Maybe you guys have um, games that you played with a kid as kids that were like, we would just never even think about as adults now. Stiff as a board. Oh, I love it. And then, yeah, like, do you remember actually levitating people? Was that not wild? And, and it worked like it was, they were light as a feather. It was incredible. And I remember doing it myself. And I remember feeling levitating once. Cause I was like, oh, I'm, I was like, you know, 150 pounds as a kid. I, there was no way anyone was going to lift me up. I was always super dense and uh, sure enough, I was up there and it was like mind blowing, but that's how powerful we are with our minds. That's how powerful we are with our energy. When we don't get it in our own way when we don't let that filter stop us when we just 
play. And so that's what I want us to do tonight is just play, to just be as light as a feather, to just allow our energy to just expand in our bodies. And uh, we're just going to, we're going to just go into a few little questions um, that we can answer, um, at, 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 that we, we have, not that we can answer, that we have the answers to, we have the access to. When we simply ask a question in meditation, we're in that space where we are connected to source and the answers will come, whether it's a week later when you're just doing something really fun, you're going for a bike ride and you're, or out for a walk and you just have this amazing idea. That's when these ideas, these answers usually come in those aha moments. And you guys will probably find a lot of those happening over the next couple of weeks. It'll be beautiful. Um, so we're just going to go in and we're just going to ask some questions. We may not know what parts we need to break up with, with ourselves yet. We may not know, what's getting in our way but this is going to be a beautiful opportunity to be able to just see it so if you guys are ready I am going to just connect in with your fields who and my hands are heating up like crazy so I'm going to give you guys some energy work at the same time here they are just I feel like they are on fire right now this is so cool as soon as I hopped into the field it was just like they're actually sweating I love it. Alrighty, so I just want you guys to connect with your breath. Whew. And I want you to just feel how heavy your breath feels. Sometimes at night like this, we've taken a lot of energies of the day. I think it's morning for you, Jesse, so you probably got a nice free breath still. But for a lot of, a lot of us, by the time the day is, is done, it's harder and harder to just take a nice deep breath in. So I want you to imagine your belly filling up when you're breathing in. And as your belly fills up, I want you to just notice that air coming in and out of your body. Breathing in and breathing out. And as you breathe in, I want you to let that air start to fill up into the chest. Filling up that belly, filling up that chest. And as you breathe out, I want you to imagine relaxing every single muscle in your body. And we're going to bring in our soul star energy, which is like a light that's just shining a couple feet above your head. And it's like a, a spotlight almost goes on and starts to shine on your head. And just imagine that light shining down and feeling warm and cascading over your hair and your scalp and imagining it almost feeling like someone's touching it very lightly like they're just caressing the top of your head just imagining what that nice soft feeling would feel like that light as a feather touch and imagine your head starting to feel as light as a feather as the oxygen the air starts moving up into your head as you breathe in belly chest head allow that air to just circulate and come in through your mouth in through your nose sorry and out through your mouth and as you breathe out just relaxing all those muscles relaxing your face muscles your forehead your head your scalp relaxing your eyes and your cheeks and your nose and your ears and your jaw and your mouth and your tongue Relaxing your neck and your shoulders and allowing that soul star to shine this light as it just, you feel it trickling down, cascading over your neck and your shoulders. And just allowing that light to literally just start washing over your shoulders and your chest, feeling that light start to expand through your body. And you can almost imagine that your whole energy field is starting to fill up with that light just as it's so bright. Spilling out with your air as you're breathing out, bringing light into your energy field and allowing that light to feel warm as it's moving down into your stomach and into your abdomen and into your pelvis and allow that light to just keep moving through your body. Now, I want you to notice as that light fills your body through your soul star that it's almost like columns of light just starting to emanate from inside of your body and just allow this light 
to fill every single cell of your body right down to your legs. That light moving down your legs, your thighs, your knees, your calves, your ankles, your feet. And imagine that light moving all the way down deep into Mother Earth, into Gaia. And allow her beautiful crystalline energy to ground you, almost like roots going down through your feet, grounding you right into the core of Mother Earth. Almost like you can feel that crystalline energy starting to take over all the cells, starting down at your feet and moving all the way up through your body. Just imagine that energy flowing through. And as you just feel this light to expand every single cell of your body, I want you to feel it diffusing. Diffusing all the hard spots, diffusing all the dark spots, just replacing everything with light through your whole body. And connecting with your breath again in through the nose, out through your mouth, relaxing any other muscle that may be tense in your body right now. Relax your pelvic floor. Actually uncontract those muscles. It's beautiful. And now I want you to imagine that you're sitting on a beach at night and there's a beautiful bonfire beside you. There may be other people around, it may just be you. I want you to probably even be by yourself if you can right now, just enjoying the fire, enjoying the warm glow of the fire, perhaps the crackle. You can maybe even smell what the bonfire smells like. I want you to just sit back and feel how good it feels to just watch that beautiful bonfire. And as you stare at the bonfire, I want you to think about some of those things that happened this year. You made up your mind to set these true intentions of perhaps just living a life that you love or finding your true nature and purpose and really living it. Perhaps you were finding health and vitality you were choosing that this year. I want you to think of all these things you've been manifesting, all these changes you've been making and how beautiful everything just sort of seems to be falling into place and just notice. Notice any resistance or any tension that comes up around, any stories that come up around anything that we've been truly trying to manifest. What about abundance? Have we been just wishing that abundance would just drop into our life? And I want you to just get up out of your chair and go walk towards the water that you notice is as clear as glass. Maybe you can hear a loon or a water bird that's out there that's calling or making a noise. Perhaps you can hear tiny little ripples of the water, but it's almost as clear as glass. And I want you to just get close enough to the water that you can perhaps see your reflection. And right now I want you to see the reflection of the person that would be about a year from now, if you were keeping on manifesting, keeping on making these choices, keeping on choosing to just completely deserve the abundance that you know is waiting for you to completely decide that your health was gonna be a priority to completely decide that you were gonna stop getting in your own way and that you were actually gonna go for what you really wanted. Who cares what anybody thinks? A year of being the true creative force in your life now that you've come so far, now that you're incorporating everything that you've been learning, now that you're doing all the things that you've been reading and saying and writing and you're actually doing. 
And if you were to look in that water right now, I want you to look at what that person would be wearing, what their hair may be like, maybe it's thicker and fuller. Maybe you started taking some kind of collagen supplement and your skin is looking so good that you're looking 10 years younger than you used to. Perhaps you're noticing that your age doesn't matter at all, that you're actually feeling like a million bucks. And you're noticing if you have pain in your body that it was just maybe something that was gonna tell you something, but it's nothing that's gonna stick around. Just feeling that frequency of health and abundance. And I want us to feel grateful for this image that we can see right now, this feeling that we can feel of actually sticking to our guns. Enough of the letting this limiting belief stop, stop us, enough of letting this person stop us, enough of the excuses. And I want you to look in the water now beside your reflection and I want you to ask divine energy, all of our angels, our ascended masters and teachers to show you right now in the water, what are some of these things that we throw up in our own experience to become hurdles? What are some of these things that we keep asking ourselves, why do I keep doing this? Notice maybe one of those times where you actually had to ask yourself, why am I feeling this way? Why am I doing this? And just notice what's being shown to you right now. This is something that is ready to shift. And if you don't see it right now, that's okay. There's going to be a moment that'll just come up where you're going to be like, why am I doing this? Oh, and just notice that asking those questions will bring those answers and just surrender to the fact that those answers will come. And as that image fades with a little ripple in the water, I want you to now ask, what could you do to support yourself? So you, what could you replace? What could you bring in? And I want you to bring in a positive thought, a positive feeling about what would happen if you let this go. And bringing in this positive idea, this positive question is going to allow this to literally move right now. I feel my body shaking already. What positive shift would happen? from allowing this change in my life. A positive shift would happen from being able to keep it simple, from going back to going back to what you know, doing what you love. And now I want you to ask all of the ascended masters, all the teachers that are just waiting to give you information right now. I want you to ask for assistance in whatever area of your life you want assistance in right now. It may be relationships, it may be love, it may be connections, it may be relationships with friends or family. There's a lot of that going on right now. It may be abundance, it may be business, it may be health. I want you to just ask the Ascended Masters. I just literally ask your angels right now for help and support. Perhaps ask if there's something that you need to know that would help make this transition easier. And if there's one thing that you could do starting right now something positive that you could do for yourself to allow a trapped emotion, a negative emotion to literally be released right now. 
you can ask to be shown in this beautiful water something that you've been struggling with that you're truly ready to let go of right now. Things we've said before, things we've made up our minds about before, things of, it doesn't have to be perfect, just one little thing, just ask to be shown that right now. And as you're gazing into the water, we're gonna ask the divine energy all angels, all ascended masters, all teachers, everyone in our, in all of our guides for our Akashic records, our spirit guides, our animal, our spirit animals. And just notice what animals may come to you right now. There's so much gurgling going on. This is amazing. You guys are doing great. And just notice what animals started to show up in your vision, started to show up in the pond, in the, in the water. What did you just see? I've seen a hawk and a panther, a black panther and a hummingbird. I've seen a seal. Just notice the animals that are coming into your vision right now. They're being made to show you what strength you can tap from them. And they're also going to help guide you moving forward. And as you keep all those spirit animals around you, I want you to ask that all cords be cut from these old emotions, these old events, these old things, these old energetic draws that we have allowed these straws that we have given people to just suck our energy and we're just going to allow all those straws to be plunked out of our cup right now pulled out watching those holes just heal up one by one allowing our energy centers to literally integrate all of this information clearing and cutting any dark energies that have been drawing on us and anything that's been keeping us stuck and tied to the past, just cutting and clearing all of those right now. And we're just going to allow this beautiful soul star light and Mother Gaia, beautiful crystalline energy to keep filling up our cells in every way. And I want you to imagine that you're just scanning through your body right now. We're going to go through the energy centers very quickly down into that root where all that familial stuff, where all those ties, where all those stories first started from way before we were born, from generations past, from past lives, from past timelines, allowing all of these stories to be cleaned and cleared and transmuted by this beautiful full moon energy light. And as you go back and sit down by the fire and just choose to enjoy this beautiful flame, I want you to just imagine that you're staring at this beautiful bonfire flame. And anything that is being cleaned and cleared, it can simply go into this bonfire light. And as we just choose to become the most powerful creators that we know that we are born to be, as we choose to let ourselves be seen by the world, as we choose to share our gifts with the world, as we choose to share our light and our smile with the world, as we choose to be abundant so that we can share our gifts, we just simply choose it because we know what we can do if we allow ourselves to be fully capable of that beautiful capable, worthy human that we know is so absolutely deserving and just choose to be that right now. Choose to take the best care of your health. If it's if anything we've learned in the last years, it's if we don't have our health. We really don't have anything and just choose to integrate this into every cell of your body, just loving Loving yourself, loving taking care of yourself, making this a new addiction, just beautifully enjoying this light energy as it comes 
up from the root into that sacral plexus, allowing all the abundance to come, allowing all the fears to shift, to clear, to transmute all of those taps we've let people just turn on and suck from us. We're now turning them all off, keeping that energy for ourselves so we can spread it where we need to instead of spreading it all over like energy taps that are just open all the time. And allowing that to move up into the solar plexus, right above your belly button in the guts where our boundaries are, where our true wishes and desires are. And I want you to think of a true desire right now. Something you just really have always felt you wanted to do, something fun, something you know you've always deserved and just allow yourself to just feel that, to just have fun, to just be that kid that doesn't care. You are as light as a feather. And just allow this light to heal that heart wall, the wall around that heart, the one that's protected us, the one that's keeping us safe, the one that is afraid. To let your guard down, just knowing that the universe is there to support you. It truly is. And allowing that light to clear and transmute the throat chakra where we can finally speak our truth, where we need to speak our truth, when we notice that speaking our truth keeps us so happy and keeps us so balanced. And as we move up into that third eye, I want you to notice the pressure in your head wanting to change, the ears starting to feel like they're open, the ears starting to feel clear, like they can hear things. You're going to hear the truth. You're going to speak the truth. You're going to feel the truth. And it's going to feel so good. And allowing that crown chakra to just open up with those columns of light up to your upper chakras, allowing your divine connection to get all of the answers from sources that are just working with you, that have been waiting to play, that are just ready to send that ball back into your field. We just need to learn to receive it and open yourself up to receiving this beautiful moonlight energy and feel that moonlight as it's just basking every cell, enveloping every cell of your body and literally dissolving any negative tension, every negative energies, any negative stories, just dissolving all that negativity. Let that moonlight just bask upon you and feel that moonlight just touching your whole body all the way down from your head to your toes, just feeling that energy move all the way through you. And grounding yourself again down into Mother Earth, feeling and choosing to be an unshakable anchor for your family, for your friends, for yourself. Choose to be that unshakable anchor. And when you guys are ready, just take a few nice deep breaths. Choose to receive a breath and all that negativity just releasing. Notice any gurgles moving around your body, any kind of warm feelings, any shakiness, yawning, hiccups, sneezing all the things when your body is releasing. And when you guys are ready, you can open your eyes up and you can come on back. We're gonna just thank all of our divine energies that came in to help us tonight, to show us any of those answers. And again, don't feel the pressure to know the answers right away. When, if you do some writing later with your good, bad, and ugly list and your what I wanna change list, if you do a little journaling, um, put your pen to paper and just allow the words to just come out. Those are usually our first thoughts and our best thoughts and those ones that come in like that unfiltered child that can just receive them. I wanna encourage our receiving in, tapping into that light as a feather, just have a good laugh to yourself on how much control and how much power we really do have. And notice that that is our power. We spend 
all of our time trying to control things and trying to have that power. And the beauty is that when we surrender to the fact that we do have it um, and actually enjoy it and feel it, it just comes more and more. Oh, bless you wonderful souls for coming this evening. And you can um, have some fun with that, play with that. I like making moon water too, where I actually fill up a pitcher of water and I just put it on the windowsill where the moon sort of shines all night. Um, I used to put it outside, but in the summer, you never know. I have a lot of animals outside and a horse that just wanders around. So he tends to like to find my moon water when I put it out. <laughs> he's just a pony so he, he just he's like our third dog he just kind of hangs out outside um but moon water is beautiful then you can use a little bit to drink you can use a little bit in your bath you can use it to spritz yourself it's something you can make for free um so instead of smudging you can use your moon water oh you're so welcome jesse i love you guys so much um charge up your crystals if you have crystals um animal spirit animals actually you know what i'm gonna do is really funny that you ask that because i have my spirit animal cards there's a, a book that's actually called animal speak and i have this beautiful um thank you heather so glad a bear a deer and a rabbit oh that's beautiful yeah i saw a few random animals come up there that was really neat um i don't know if you guys can see this now it's blocking out oh maybe it'll work animal messages from the spirit the spirit animals basically the spirit guides i have a, a deck of cards that um that I do and oftentimes I was just I, I carried them with me today in the car because I was like I need my, my spirit animal card so it's interesting that you asked that I love that um and a spence bird I don't know what kind of bird that is that's so cool maybe like a uh uh it would be called a heron I think was it like a, a long-legged bird that you saw uh, a sphinx that was flying oh wow like twirling around and bowing oh, up that is so cool that is really come neat. to me before isn't that beautiful i'd have to i don't think that one's in my card deck but it it's probably in my book so i'll see if i can find that and one flipped out oh the falcon that's so cool i think i said i saw that in the meditation too um the falcon so it's really neat there's a little sort of guide that comes with it so i'll read to you what it says but basically act on the opportunity that's before you and commit to it without equivocation so that's definitely something you know you set your mind on something you got to go for it i talked last week in my meditation about you know ordering your dinner how chris always says choose it choose your steak or your your chicken kind of thing but what we tend to do is order it and if it's not coming in time we tend to go oh maybe i should have had the chicken okay give, give, give me the chicken instead of the steak you know and we start changing our minds we don't stick on that sort of what we knew we kind of needed to do in the first place so really neat um yeah i don't have that particular bird in this book but it's uh, i'll read you the falcon one that came up at least so uh providence is on your side the opportunity that has been presented to you is congruent with your soul's purpose even if you don't feel fully prepared or have doubts in your ability to manage the complexities that are inherent in tackling this venture dive in any ways you'll be pleasantly surprised by the support that will come to you in unexpected ways all it takes is the willingness on your part to continually and on a steady course wholeheartedly while at the same time being open to changes in the direction that the winds are blowing it's kind of like you know for coaches picking a niche you can pick a niche you can go for it don't let that stop you you can always change it down the road it's a it's a train that's going you can just literally kind of hop on another one you don't have to go all the way back and start at the beginning again so i like this one for coaches um it is important to stay focused on the goal that is ahead of you while also remaining mindful of the purpose of your of your mission Commit to your mission 100% and fulfill that commitment to the best of your ability. This isn't a time for analysis, introspection, or retreat, but a time for action. 
as you respond to the opportunity that's before you, be willing to adjust your course of action at the need as the need dictates, while at the same time moving steadily towards your goal. You can deal with whatever concerns come up without being distracted by them and without straying from the path that you're on. So gratefulness, gracefulness, vitality, enthusiasm, precision. So normally I'm like, feel the fear and do it anyways, but that fear for the next couple of weeks, be introspective. Don't blast it all out there yet. Take these couple of weeks and really be solid because even if you are a little more solid before you go putting whatever this is out there, you won't go out there and then go, oh my gosh, I did, uh, I shouldn't have done that and come back and retreat and then not go out again. It's almost better to wait this week or two, really dial this stuff in, allow this crazy energy of this full moon to um, kind of take you into the new moon cycle. And by the time the new moon cycle comes up, you'll be ready to just be blasting out to the whole um, the, the whole universe, what you are ready for here. Oh, wow, Samara, that is so cool. That is so cool. Hathers for whoever saw the Sphinx bird. So Sandra, have a look at Hathers too. Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry. I don't have those birds in my, uh, in my little, I only brought, uh, my cards with me today instead of my whole book. My, my whole book has a lot more stuff in it. This one has the kiwi in it, but it doesn't have our, our sphinx birds. So, um, yes. So that's me for today, ladies. I am so grateful for you guys making it. Did anyone have any other questions before I let you guys go? And I go climb into a freezing cold ice rink. Cause I'm like sweating from that energy work today. That was really neat. So my hands were just, just moving things through. Um, and keep your protective energies up. We have that frequency number nine. I've tuned in with you guys before. Um, if you didn't hear about the matrix energetics frequencies, frequency number nine is just this beautiful. I think of it as bubbles, sort of like iridescent bubbles, protecting us, moving around us. Keep yourselves protected energy wise over the next couple of weeks, just because we are going to be a little emotional. We are going to be a little susceptible because we're supposed to be noticing these things right now so just you know, keep that I just literally tune into frequency number nine I almost like instead of my soul star I imagine bubbles just being poured inside my body and just literally protecting it's it's very cool so yes number nine um frequency number nine is very you just literally picture an iridescent style frequency just coming over you like a dome just protecting you like a clear translucent dome and all people shit they can just get bounced right back to them it's not going to get through your bubble <laughs> your bubble is strong you got this I felt that cord cutting and stuff just um really helped remove a lot of those ties to that that stuff that was still kind of hanging on there so I will throw the replay for this in my group. So if you guys aren't in my group, send me a message and I will absolutely make sure that you're in there. Um, and if you guys have any questions, you can always message me at any time too. Bless you ladies. Thank you so much for making it tonight. It was awesome to, to do this for you guys. My body's still shaking. I had lots of stuff moving through. So drink some water tonight. Make sure you just get some sleep. Um, maybe even have like an Epsom salts bath, just ground yourself a little bit and imagine your feet just kind of tapping into Gaia, into mother earth, almost like you have little roots growing right into the core of the earth and it just crystallizes all that negative stuff. Awesome. Kathy, I will send you an email that has um, a link to the group in it so you can see this replay and a whole bajillion others in there that are in there too. Awesome. Thank you so much, you guys. I'm going to take a snapshot of that so that I've got that for you so I can make sure you get there. Excellent. Well, have a wonderful weekend and a wonderful full moon. Enjoy that energy, bask in it. And I will hopefully see you guys next week. Take care, everybody. Thank you so much.